In this one, we got a 1 versus 16 matchup here in the East region. Remember, that is in the bottom left-hand corner of your bracket. In this one, we got the number one seed, Purdue Boilermakers, taking on the number 16 seed, Fairly Dickinson Knights, fresh off a of first four win. First of all, for Purdue, what a season it's been for the Boilermakers. 29-5 and five overall. This team ranked in the top five for the majority of the season. They end up winning the Big Ten regular season title and the Big Ten championship after defeating Penn State in the Big Ten title game. This team incredibly balanced overall, especially on the offensive end. They are ninth in the nation in offensive efficiency. They move the ball terrifically well. They've got a really good assist rate. I love that about Purdue. Also defensively, they're really solid as well. 23rd in the nation in defensive efficiency. The thing I love most about Purdue is they put teams on the free throw line at the lowest rate in the country. This means that they defend without fouling. I love that. That's a great characteristic to have in March. The two guys I'm looking out for on this Purdue Boilermakers squad is their freshman guard duo of Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith. There's been some inconsistency there. One of them is going to need to step up in every game and have a big outing and really be that secondary go-to guy, obviously, besides Zach Eady. My problem with this team is the guard play, right? Your two main guards are freshmen. And again, they've been inconsistent. I find that problematic. Sometimes Purdue's shot making from the outside is also suspect. This team gives me a couple of concerns, but I still believe in them quite a bit. For Fairleigh Dickinson, the Knights come into this one 20 and 15 on the year. They are the NEC automatic qualifiers this year. They come off a first four victory over Texas Southern, and they absolutely smacked. Texas Southern last night. Now, if you're looking for more analysis on Fairleigh Dickinson, go back to the first four video between them and Texas Southern where I break down this night squad a little bit more, but we're going to keep it short just for this one. Now, in the game against Texas Southern, Fairleigh Dickinson looked terrific. They knocked down 11 threes, they moved the ball really well, and they played solid defense on Texas Southern. Now, Texas Southern went 1 of 17 from 3. I don't think Purdue is going to do that against the squad. However, a solid defensive outing for Fairleigh Dickinson. Ainsley Almanor, a big game for the Knights. He had 23 points in this one. Five threes for him. Be interesting to see if he could keep his momentum going because they're going to have to keep this hot shooting going into this matchup against Purdue. Yeah, my problem here with Fairleigh Dickinson is who is going to guard Edie and how are they going to guard Edie. Fairleigh Dickinson is the shortest team in the tournament. So no surprise that they're probably going to have big time problems against Zach Edie in this game. In terms of this matchup, I think Purdue is going to end up bringing the hammer to this Fairleigh Dickinson squad. However, I will say that of the 16 seeds given the matchup, I think Fairleigh Dickinson is going to be the closest of these 16 seeds. If for whatever reason you're looking for a 16 over a one upset, this might be the one that you consider. But in the end, if I had to put this on the upset potential meter, I would put it pretty dang close to no chance here in this one. Give me the Purdue Boilermakers to win this one over the Knights and move on to the second round. Do you want to win your March Madness bracket pool? Do you want to not only beat your friends, but humiliate them? If that sounds good to you, subscribe down below because we are previewing all 36 first round games of the NCAA tournament and give you the info you need to crush your friends and dominate your bracket pool.